The ingredients used in Coke production are caffeine, caramel color, natural flavorings, carbonated water, and sugar which can either be regular sucrose or high fructose corn syrup. The first ingredient that's processed is water. Coca-Cola factories are located in areas with access to a steady natural water supply, or springs for example. Usually, a pumping system transports the water from the natural source to the factory, and this water supply serves all the factory's needs. When the water gets to the factory, it's passed via the pumping system to the water purification plant. At the plant, the water is poured inside large steel vessels and put through the regular water purification processes, including coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation, filtration, and disinfection. In simpler words, the water is treated with special kinds of salts, which cause all the dirt and particles in the water to clump together and form big particles. Next, the water is allowed to rest so that these particles can settle at the bottom of these vessels. After that, the clear water at the top is filtered to separate it from the solids. For extra precaution, this clear water is passed through screens of different sizes to remove other dissolved particles and remove bad odors. Finally, the filtered water is treated with chemical disinfectants like chlorine to kill any remaining germs and parasites like bacteria and viruses. At this point, the water is as pure as humanly possible and ready to move on to the next stage of production. When the water is being purified, other ingredients are also being prepared, and one of the most important ones is caffeine. Initially, the caffeine used by Coca-Cola Company was extracted from plants. However, because of the increase in demand and lower cost of production, the company now uses synthetic caffeine. This is made using an unpleasant gas called ammonia, but first, it is detoxified. So don't worry. The purified ammonia is then passed through several chemical processes, which yield about five other compounds before finally producing the desired product, caffeine. This synthetic caffeine is tested and purified before it is sent to the mixing room where it combines with other ingredients. The next ingredient is sugar, which can be gotten from one of two alternatives. First is sucrose, which is extracted from the root of a plant called sugar beet. Sounds like a great DJ name. Due to the company's high use of sugar beets, they have several farms on which this plant is grown and harvested as often as they have use for them. The other alternative is fructose, which is obtained from high fructose corn syrup. For Diet Coke or Zero Coke, neither one of these is used, but instead, artificial sweeteners like saccharin and aspartame are. The next ingredient that is prepared is the caramel coloring, which gives Coke drinks their brown color. This flavor is made by heating a sugar-containing compound, usually high dextrose corn syrup. The syrup is heated until the sugar content caramelizes and the distinct brown syrup is formed. In another preparation room, phosphoric acid, which acts as a flavor enhancer, is produced and prepared to be transported to the mixing room, where all the ingredients are finally mixed. Next, all the ingredients are transported to the mixing room through specific pumping systems. The mixing process takes place in a machine called the syrup maker because, at the end of this process, the mixture formed is called the syrup, which is the base of the Coca-Cola drink. The mixing happens in an orderly fashion, starting with the purified water and then the sugar. This is mixed first for a few seconds before other ingredients are added to the appropriate concentrations. All the ingredients dissolve in the water without forming any lumps since they are all polar. And the final batch of ingredients added is the natural flavorings. The exact formula for the flavorings added has been a secret since the beginning of the company, but in recent years, some of the flavors have been announced to the public. Some of them include citric acid, lime juice, a few drops of cinnamon, orange, lemon, nutmeg oils, and a bunch of others. However, not all the ingredients were disclosed, and their measurements were not made public for those that were. Although we're no longer left in the dark regarding the flavorings used to make Coca-Cola, the formula remains a secret known by only a few anonymous employees. Even factory workers are clueless about the constituent of the mix of flavoring they use every day. Once the mixing process is over, the mixture is transported to a machine that saturates it with carbon dioxide gas. The machine used is called a carbonator, and it pumps in the gas at high and low pressures to allow it to dissolve in the mixture. 
Carbon dioxide is what gives Coke its renowned fizziness, and at this point, the production of the drink is complete, and all that's left is filling the bottles. Next, the Coke liquid is pumped to a dispensing machine which portions specific quantities of the drink into clean plastic bottles. Prior to this moment, the bottles are checked for leakages and stacked on filling machines. Before filling, the machine flips these bottles upside down and flushes them with clean water at high pressure. The orientation of these bottles allows them to easily drain, and after about a minute, they are returned to the right orientation. Once the bottles have been cleaned, the filling machine dispenses the Coke mixture and calculated quantities into the bottles, while another machine fastens the bottle caps. Next, the bottles move to another machine, which wraps them in the red Coca-Cola labels and imprints barcodes on them. Afterward, they are automatically transported to the inspection area, where skilled factory workers guarantee they meet all the company's requirements. After checking, the bottles move to a packaging machine which sorts the bottles into the number present in the pack, which is typically 12, and each batch is packed in plastic cartons. The cartons are stacked on each other and mechanically loaded into cranes, which load them into the factory's warehouse, trucks, or ships from where they are transported to retail stores worldwide.